let me just let you in. When I first heard about this super straight idea, my instinctual response was to kind of brace for nuclear fallout. Um, and I was kind of right about that, quite frankly. Like, um, But I, I want to talk about some of the contextual issues with it more than anything else. Um, one is that there's a political concept called the Overton window. Basically, it's that if all, like there's all these different things that you're allowed to talk about in discourse, or like a window of discourse is another terminology for it, of that you're allowed to talk about these things in these ways. If you talk about it in a, a different way, then you will lose your watch minutes. You will get shadow banned, banned, um, have your videos taken down. Uh, an example of this from the last couple years is the way people talk about vaccines and masks, right? If you were to say, I don't want to wear a mask, you would get canceled because that's outside of the Overton window regarding mask wearing. Okay, and now that's like, and the reason I use that is that's kind of an expired issue in that a lot of, like, there's what, 15, 16 states now that are open that don't have mask mandates. And so that's one. But here in the super straight issue, the way that works is that um, heterosexuality, or let's say committed heterosexuality, has been outside of the Overton window of discourse for a long time, for probably going on a decade now, has been outside. Do you want to talk about you just being a uh, straight white male and be, maybe even being proud of being a straight white male? Like, that's just not allowed. And it's been not allowed for a while. That's not news. But the trans stuff, that's been moved into almost to the center of the Overton window recently over the last maybe two maybe about two years has been moved further and further into the towards the center of the Overton window people don't like that and so that's where this super straight issue comes in because that's it's basically that if you imagine a tug of war people have been pulling on the left in that direction so that they've moved the entire window of discourse this way. Now, if it, it's forced, it's literally scrunching the conservative set of dialogues together so that they're having to join sides with and mirror the rhetoric of people that they would have vastly distanced themselves from just a few years ago. Are you keeping up with me a little bit? That's what's happening. And so that's what gave birth to this idea of super straight. That's what's given birth to the, uh, this, just this whole realm of dialogue we're in now over uh, it's saying that it's transphobic, saying that it's not transphobic. It's just being proud of your sexuality. Well, you can't, just invent sexualities. Well, you've been inventing sexualities for the last couple of years now. What do you mean you can't? Like, this has been the, the back and forth. This is what they've been saying. And, um, I think that as people continue to extremify each other, like just running as far away from each other in terms of dialogue, um, and rhetoric, uh, we get more and more um, polarized. It's not more divided, it's just more polarized. It's the exact same amount of weight on the scale. They're just moving it further and further apart from one another. Um, and I don't think it's good. It's, it's definitely not a move I would have made. I think this, um, I think the idea of using someone's own logic against them. I've always found that to be really petty, childish. Um, it's never been very productive in terms of dialogue, for sure. Um, and it's especially 
um, hostile in terms of when you're discussing things with people that are um, that you don't know. Like it's one thing to, oh, I'm going to play devil's advocate over here for a minute. And um, with somebody that you know, and they realize that you're being absurd, that you're using extremist rhetoric, but then you're going to walk back towards the center afterwards. But people that you don't know don't know that. And so they're just going to take that snapshot of you in caricature, and then they're going to use that against you. So I just, I don't think it's very productive. Uh, and... I've already gone to war against the MGTOW and against the Christian feminist and against like a lot of these already and so I don't feel a need to kind of sugarcoat myself on this of that people that are identifying as super straight I wouldn't let my daughter date one I'm saying I'll say it like that if I find like have my daughter and she's uh, tells me that she's into some guy and she tells me his name and I look him up on Snapchat or something and I see that he's got that black and orange square. You know what? It, sorry, sweetheart. It's not the one for you. And hopefully, like, like maybe that's enough for him to, like, change his mind about some stuff, but probably not. Because I just, that doesn't seem like a safe person to me. If I open up... I don't like if I was to see that on a Tinder profile, I wouldn't consider that person to be very welcoming. Wouldn't feel very safe around that person, and I think that's kind of the sentiment under what people are like the, where they're trying to push back on this. They're not very well articulate in the way that they're saying it, but that's I think the basic sentiment that we don't feel safe around someone that's super straight. So if you're, at the, the desire here is for you to say, it's because I only like the opposite sex, then just say that, I think maybe. I don't think you need to make yourself a special category for your, like for literally the primary biological genetic baseline of of like mammalian sexuality. You're building a brand off of walking, essentially like, wow, I'm such a competitive walker. Like you go down to get the mail on like every day. Like there's nothing special happening here, essentially. Like that's kind of what I'm at, where I'm at.